Hey guys, what's up? Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram. Yeah, so as the title suggests, this video I have made to uh, share my experience uh, at the German consulate in India uh, so that you guys are uh, get some help. Uh, maybe be because uh, you're watching this video, maybe because you have received your admit from any university, be it a technical university or any other university in Germany. So I would love to share my <laughs> experience with you about uh, the questions that I keep uh, getting from my friends, my uh, all the juniors or the people who have applied and got admit. So maybe I thought uh, you get some help from this. So there are certain questions that you might have in your mind uh, regarding the visa interview and they are so, so and so like the first thing I would like to share is uh, the doubt among people regarding the visa fee there have been like instances where people end up like in my case which I will tell you later on that I was misguided maybe because of uh, some chats in the common whatsapp group about the fees visa fees so what is quoted there in the in the website like it keeps changing but I don't know if it's constant during our time I think it was 4500 back in 2017 so try uh, not to take anything, any amount extra to that. Like, for example, you take some extra exchange amount or something like that. So before recounting my experience, I felt this is something that really is uh, most important because otherwise, if you are, you don't have any time. And nowadays in 2018, I'm seeing that there are a lot of uh, like battle for getting an appointment more especially in the Bengaluru consulate so yeah guys mine was the Calcutta consulate which is so far the best the kind and the benevolent consulate uh, the German embassy uh, the German government has in India so it was really not very difficult and I was lucky enough to have got it in one go usually you don't hear any cases of any rejection for visa and and the process was really very fast it didn't take, it hardly took 25 days for my visa to i for me to get mail from the date of the interview to the uh, for, of date of receiving that okay your visa has been granted the only problem that i faced was that it took almost nine days after me submitting so when you receive this uh uh the visa approval letter mail from the consulate usually you are asked to come in between like the working days Monday to Friday or time at time they have the reservations so they have some holidays and they will call you they will mention you when when are the days that you can come and submit your passport and your like in my case they asked for the passport and the travel insurance or the health insurance I don't remember yeah it was a travel insurance so it was really annoying because they took my passport and it took like like it usually they have to give it back in few days but they took like nine days and I was annoying so I still remember having I was checking my mail and I still remember that I put them a mail and then somehow there was it it, it, it you can't say anything but you don't have to worry because I had ample time so they even knew that this person has ample time because you mentioned that in your visa uh, application that this is your intended date of traveling. But that was really annoying because it happens within two or three working days and it took almost nine days. Having said that, I would uh, uh, like try to give some suggestions that are like uh, being very extra cautious with your application. Uh, one was of course the demand draft issue. Having said that, there can be any time like we never know. We never know and the problem with calling them is that hardly people receive your call. And your 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 calls are not entertained uh, from the consulate side. There will be some odd person or the clerk who would be picking it up and just uh, leaving the call as it is. So you, it's better and advisable to carry a credit card with you. Now I will share you this interesting experience of mine. So what happened is, I was I didn't study in 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 Calcutta or anywhere nearby where my residence is. So I stay in Karakpur, which is a bit far, hundred kilometer, hundred odd kilometers from Calcutta. So my I studied in uh, in a different state, Uttar Pradesh, and I was attending this interview. So there is this boy from who has got this PhD. So he was a PhD student where his professors uh, had called him uh, and maybe something like that. 
so when he went he like we came we get got into the uh the the visa the 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 room where you like the room where you have you have to face the person the in, in, uh, the interviewer uh, across that glass uh window so what happened is i spoke to this boy i was having some doubt i had this confusion created by the so called group members or the other admits fellow admits to the same university and i took a demand draft from sbi could having the amount of per, which was extra or more than the required amount and he also did the same thing and we were we discussed this issue with um, amongst ourselves and we were super confident now this boy was someone from iit kharagpur and i was thinking like well he is from kharagpur he's a localite and he's visiting his home consulate i would say because more or less it was not a home consulate for me uh, being away from the state for so long uh, so i thought he is well advised by his friends who keep on visiting the consulate but immediately he goes in front of me like he proceeds to the desk and then his application is rejected i can very well hear because he's he's a person and i could very well hear because i was very close to him i was just standing there was a small bench and i was just standing and listening to what the what of the questions they, he was asking so immediately because of his dd demand drafts issue he was rejected and he was just told that you have to book another appointment and come back which is really uh i would say uh like for me it was very difficult because and it would have been very difficult because i had to terminate uh, my contract with another institution my uh, admission from another institution and i had to attend and that was a friday that was i was like i was not more fortunate but maybe uh, less fortunate because i got the friday as the date so the next appointment is of course monday which would have never been possible and i would not have made it so what i do is so i have this bad habit uh, that i will be carrying every freaking card that is of no use uh, for example i'm going to a consulate i don't have any use of a credit card usually even for transacting back in india then i was not using a credit card i was having ample atm cards to i uh, the debit cards basically uh, to use uh, at any any uh, over the counter kiosk but still uh, uh that day i was carrying this credit card with me which i was unknowingly because i was by then not knowing that you know you can have a credit you can pay through a credit card which is also not mentioned even i don't think now even the back then it was not mentioned on the website and i proceed to the desk so this boy what happened to him is after his dd failed basically failed the norms of uh, getting accepted as a mode of payment he never asked a question he simply walked away in my case i had to i had to i mean uh, uh, without that i have no other option so it was a do one die do or die situation for me so i just raised this question that uh, like do you accept this credit card and i was like yes we do accept credit card so this is one suggestion that i would like to tell you and yeah of course my visa interview went well coming back to the questions and um, what i faced there were not really much questions but i was maybe a bit smart it was a do or die situation for me i was already late with the interview but the thing is there were not many questions from that person smart moves from me were one was affidavit which is never mentioned but what happened was he was checking i even they don't ask for a financial statement because your blocked account letter does but additionally i added because i had taken a uh, like to get those blocked account i had taken loan uh, from the bank i had to show, i thought felt like showing the it returns of my parent because the only question that you face when you are you have been admitted to uh, most of you must have been admitted in the tuition free courses or uh, international program so of course the question of speaking german at the level was out of the box the main question then comes is the funding part so the funding part is that it's the onus is all on the consul general whether he rejects or he accepts and then you can like uh send another letter and all those uh re appeal and stuff and that is a long procedure so it's better to be smart and what i did was i attached the it returns of my parent because he was also kind of sponsoring me well i never wanted uh him to sponsor me but because he was a co-borrower for the loan i thought it is wise for me to 
take the six month statement uh, of his which is used not for internet used for in, like loan purpose and all so i took the same documents to the consulate and i said sir sir is it fine for you to accept these documents and he said yeah 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 you can punch in that with the uh, the the blocked account letter confirmation letter so this gives like you know this gives the person who would be looking at your application visa application and all your documents maybe an extra push to grant you the visa so it return last six months bank statement and an affidavit so basically i affidavit is a document which is uh which is a legal document in india and they also accept this where, whereas they don't mention it anywhere but i had got this done and where i had per- clearly mentioned that me and my parents we have co borrowed uh we are the co borrowers of a loan from a bank a nationalized bank and these are the these are the financial status of us so we have no issues in uh becoming a sanjay dat and begging in the streets when he get into the new country so this was additional tip well apart from all this i think very recently i had a strange question uh, and it was like a, a good uh, like uh, we noticed it at the earliest stage so what happens is there are times there are admits which don't carry a electronic verification what you have to do is if you have some time left and you just have received per mail that uh, letter uh, which is not having a electronic verification there are time when it takes uh, a long span of time for it to reach by you by post because they all the universities which don't have a e verification they are supposed to do it in uh, uh, like they put a signature and they send it by post and they also scan the same thing and send it by mail so you have to also wait for it uh, because otherwise it it becomes very difficult on the part of the consulate to you know verify it and then at times they you can you will be asked this question that uh, because of course you are not going to you whatever you are taking to them is the a scanned copy they have mailed you and you take a color photocopy of the same thing or a color print out of the same thing so there are times there are certain doubts so be very sure that you have received uh, your hard copy by mail which is like an advantage having said that i would also for example there are times when these people ask about the travel insurance again like i told you when i got this visa approval mail they told bring your passport and your travel insurance so what you do is you have to write down on a piece of paper what are the documents that you are submitting in that also they mention what are the photocopies you are submitting what are the originals you are submitting a wise advice is to put the travel insurance and the health insurance in the uh, original uh, what do you call it in the original uh, in the checklist you have to write it down because you know there are few things that they return to you there are few things they don't return be uh, uh, it's advisable to carry a photocopy as well as a same print out a uh, same color print on because of course you must have received your tra- health and travel insurance by uh mail uh, you don't have time it often takes time for it to arrive in my time i was fortunate enough that i had a friend named sammy uh, uh, in germany who has a company called coracle.de the link is in the description description what happens uh, uh, what happens with coracle is that they don't ask you any money so basically what happens is that uh, you see you come to germany you don't have to pay and the first debit from your bank account after you submit a bank account details that to not by visiting in person but sending it uh, submitting it to the coracle website with a scanned copy of your bank accounts let uh, detail and you see the first debit maybe after 15 working 15 working days into your first month of your for the first semester and uh, they you have a variety you have a choice of three insurance or more than that uh, private maybe or if you are more than 30 years old or public insurance statutory public insurance uh, if you are less than that as a student so he the company his company basically doesn't charge any money from you you just have to go ahead and submit your credentials the best part also is that getting it as fast as possible after you have got a admit is that they don't ask from this year they have made this uh, stance that they won't be asking for the blocked account letter so it hardly takes 2 to 4 days working days from the, your date of punching in all the detail in the website to you getting the health insurance and the travel insurance per mail this year also they have an add on they don't they aren't charging any money for the travel insurance which otherwise in my time i had purchased from bajaj alliance and it was some 4 5 000 odd rupees which is of no good use having uh, because i mean none of us are expecting to get uh, a huge grant or you're going to get killed and then you know our family will get the uh, money 
so it's no no point of you know just getting travel insurance for the couple of days so for the travel insurance my advice would be go with the free insurance along with the health insurance that coracle is giving you so these are these these are few of my experience well one more thing i would like to add is in my during my time there there was a time lag between uh, me and receiving the admit and all almost all the documents that I have to procure are over and ready and my visa interview so one smart tip would be that there are certain documents that you have to get signed or attested from your university if your university is far i would suggest to go to the consulate get an appointment that's from a different website link is in the de- description to go and for your attestation of your documents for uh, you what to do it's free to some extent so you it keeps changing for different consulates it's it has different rates i mean of course for for a certain ex- extent of uh, uh, document it uh, number of do- pages it, they don't charge but after that they charge so what you can do is the best idea why i'm giving is you get familiar with the officials who would be handling your you would be there you would be interviewing you during your visa uh, uh, for your visa so it's good to you know go and get familiar with them and uh, I, i was fortunate that the person who was uh, there during uh, the time of getting me those documents uh, attested was the same person as i mean i don't know if he if thought i be, i was a familiar face because there are a lot of people who keep coming but maybe it is an extra advantage yeah regarding the questions that are asked in the interview i think i'm not the smart person to tell you this thing because the questions might differ from person to person and i think you are yourself too smart to answer the questions that would be put uh, forward uh, in front of you what i can suggest is that there are certain internships that are certain things that you do fail to add to your uh, the visa application package so what you have to do is there are certain times they will ask you from those documents that they're seeing from the work ex- work experience or something like that or maybe you, you at times you don't have a work experience most of you must be freshers what in this case you have to do is you have to attach and punch in all the uh, the relevant certificates you might have in some field not all the certificates and also the internship letters and stuff which uh, they at times accept and in my case they did apart from that there are things very different for different consulates in mumbai and bangalore in bangalore because there have a lot of people to you know let them move out of the country they are very strict with the question part but i think as far as calcutta is concerned please be assured that you won't be asked any difficult questions it's just that you don't piss the interview off and you have to like be really like that person you know like a personal assistant to a officer so you have to like do it in such a way that he the person doesn't get discombobulated during the whole course of that short interview last but not the least th- some people have a very bad habit of writing a two page cover letter for the visa interview which is a, v- n- a non smart move and also no need to you know s- t- uh, you can go with the same 12 font and any any uh, 12 size of the font uh, of the uh, letters and also what i would advise is not to write all those things that people write in their cover letter like these are the documents that i have attached there is no point in that what additionally you can do is write one or two line about your funding and how you would sponsor yourself and also maybe your they really don't have time to you know keep they check for the validity of your educational qualification so it's better to mention your percentage and all of course if you have a good percentage it's worth mentioning it you can mention that in your like in a tabular form in your cover letter instead of writing two page letter and all those bull crap uh, that i have attached this i have attached that of course they will ask you for in a, uh, to write in a piece of paper what are the originals that you are submitting to them and what are uh, the duplicates of the same so uh these are something from my side and apart from that what i was uh, what i would like to add is regarding the number of Cop- the copy number of copies which of course is two uh, you have to have carry two sets but i i carry three sets there are times when uh, there are times when you never notice that the the photocopy don't have a very great quality or um, uh, um, so what what happens is that they, you know they 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 are sometimes they, they their eyes are maybe you know might have had some defect or maybe something like that So in my case I remember I was carrying an extra copy and there was one 
it was actually printed it was not a photocopy but he asked me that you have an extended warranty this won't work he said that they have an option of going back and getting it photocopied if they have a big office a well affluent office but they get pissed off by these kind of behavior when you are carrying a shitty piece of hazy blurred uh, document so that is also one one smart move otherwise the visa interview for germany is very super super easy again going by the timeline it hardly takes 25 to 30 days for you to receive a visa approval letter and another 7 days to for you to get back your uh, visa stamped on your passport after you have submitted that so wish you all a very good luck and for any other queries you can punch me in uh, in the comment box i would love to help you thank you